Okay, so we've um, wired our batteries wrong and we should put them all in one stack and we'll use one long set of DC cables. And uh, I've had people say this that have said they're um, installers. There's a good reason why we used more than one set of cables. And it's not just about batteries and storage, you see. So if you've got a big inverter, it draws a lot of power. So if you've just got batteries that are you know, say you've got a three kilowatt inverter and you have eight batteries because you want storage. You're not particularly pushing power, but you want storage, then that would probably be fine. But when you've got a 10 kVA um, inverter, uh, it's very different. I think you can see the size of that thing up there. That's got a 400 amp fuse on it, recommended. So it can actually draw near to that. There's a few people that keep on about these batteries. You've wired them wrong, you should use one set of cables. Simply not true. When I had eight, it made it nice to be able to set them out in twos, because I couldn't set them out in fours because it would still go over the limit. So the idea was that I had eight. I've now down to six because things just haven't quite worked out well with Pylon Tech at the moment. It's got it in black and white in the manual of what these batteries are capable of, of what the cable is capable of. There's a, there's a diagram that Victron sent out and they use, have four Pylon Techs and four Pylon Techs wired in parallel and they use two sets of DC cables. Victron's um, example diagram. Now, when I bought eight of these, that's how I envisaged it being. I envisaged it saying four and four with two sets of long DC cables. Not one set of long DC cables, two sets because of the power and the way I wanted them to stand up against there. But because this inverter is such a big inverter, I got sent four sets of DC cables. And I had to ask the question, I was like, well, why? I didn't know why I ended up with this many. But Nicholas Howe, a guy that has had pylon tech batteries for years uh, he was one of the few people that had pylon techs on YouTube at the time just like two years maybe 18 months ago you could hardly find anything about pylon tech they have grown very very quickly this company and um, they're everywhere and really there was very little information about it and set for Nicholas Howe that had been um, putting out stuff for a long time so I asked him and he said that's you know basically because your inverter is what it came down to of what those cables are rated for you know I am no way am I an expert I don't know I've never done anything like this before but I do know that these are wired right for what I've got keep getting this thing come up you've not wired them in parallel they are in parallel believe me they're just wired to a bus bar after that so they're in twos at the moment we've only got six working one of them is out of commission so these are wired in parallel two 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 long DC cables to that uh, bus bar system they go through the fuses then to the bus bar system I've had people say about my fuses were wrong, they were wrong. You know, I did what nearly everyone else was doing at the time, had mega fuses in that box. And I still get knocked for it now from people, people saying, you've spent a load of money on these fuses, you've wasted your money, why did you do that? Because I looked at the other version of the Pylon Tech manual, and in the other version of the Pylon Tech manual, not the one that comes with the thing, the one that's online, it says about you need an adequate breaker with short protection and those give the short protection in those fuses they can hold back the how many ever thousands of amps that they want to flood everything with if they go AWOL so that's why I ended up getting those to be safe and I got rid of the mega fuses that were in there because they weren't up to it they just wouldn't hold back that sort of current but I get people saying you know why did you do that in wasting money and because there's examples all over the internet of those mega fuses being used and I don't care if you've got mega fuses that are using it these do have short protection already but the fact that the other manual says that you should have more short protection makes you unsure that their short protection is going to actually work <laughs> so 
yes they've got short protection but in the manual it says to use basically more short protection so I did that so I've been doing all I can do and um, I have made a few errors with things there was someone else that pointed out uh, and quite rightly that we've got a Lynx powering that comes and, and wires in all from our PV this uh, isn't rated for what I'm doing with it um, it's actually only rated for 9 to 60 volts VDC and I had these um, <coughs> combiner boxes I had two combiner boxes um, I ordered and when they eventually came I found that they weren't actually rated high enough for what I had and the insides weren't right anyway because um, another thing this guy brought up quite rightly is my red cables that come off there off of that the end of that box aren't aren't um, like the PV wire they're not that double coated stuff uh, and, and in my uh, naivety to be honest all I thought that was on those cables was extra shielding because they're outside in the weather uh, but he's saying that it's, and I haven't looked this up, he's saying it's because you know it's such a high of lot of voltage but I knew it was risky using this um, thing, I knew what it was rated for but I couldn't understand why it was rated so low these bus bars they can do a thousand amps as a normal amps fine but this high VDC rating uh, was a concern and I asked questions online I, I started asking people do you think it'd be able to do it why is it not able to do it you know why is the plastics different from that than other things because I've got some stuff that's plastics you know certain plastics and it's fine so we've got this uh, big fuse here in a plastic container that's rated at 160 VDC rating on it uh, can do up to 400 amps through it. Now those bus bars are 100 amps but only rated up to 60 VDC so I ummed and ahmed and I can't quite figure out how I come to the conclusion. I asked lots of questions some people were like oh no you must stick with what it says and other people were like well I don't see why not why it can't do that and so in the end for some strange reason I can't quite remember why I thought yeah it'd be alright you know I was born in the 80s you know I didn't wear crash helmets when they went cycling and they uh, didn't have nets around their trampolines and stuff like that and I do a dangerous job for a living so it was a bit of like risk management I thought well it should work and it does it hasn't burnt anything down and um, <coughs> it's not melted anything so so this guy is having a bit of a dig at me and you know he wasn't wrong we've had two hot summers now and nothing's arcing nothing's you know and he did say about and you've only got a wooden board behind there it is fireboard it does look like wood but that's a fireboard behind there later on I'd like to get a PV combiner box for it because if we're going to do a camper conversion I could definitely use that bus bar system in my camper but the problem is um, at the time finding one Covid was going on there was nowhere near the amount of companies selling stuff back then either the amount of companies, when I click in now, the amount of companies that have come out of nowhere because, since, in the last 18 months, there is, this has boomed. The solar thing has just gone crazy. And there are so many more things out there. Because all I really want is a bus bar system that's well insulated and says it's rated for 200 VDC and I would just carry on with what I've got. But I think I'm going to end up getting a combiner box because nothing is saying that. It is something I'd like to change, but at the moment, you know, it's been well tested now. And uh, apart from perhaps putting a cover on it, I'm just going to leave it alone because it really works, you know. But I'm not suggesting, so you must remember, I'm not qualified. And there was at a time when I was struggling to get things, I had a bit of a mad scientist moment. So bear that in mind. Um, we need to look at that part. This part, don't listen to anybody about this, this you know, you've done it wrong because I've had so many people say you've done it wrong and had to go have I done it wrong and really question myself and look into it again and go I haven't I haven't done it wrong it's been right especially when you get someone boasting that they're an installer you don't have to stack them in one big pile especially if you've got a bigger inverter you can use more than one long DC cable so um, but you'd think a thousand amp bus bar would be able to withstand a bit of uh, bit of grunt from VDC and uh, it can you know it can so 
you know, uh, I played the mad scientist and I won. And if all that fails, I've got an extinguisher up here as well. I'm sorry I've abused you.